Welcome to the first lecture in this series where we're talking about leverage points. So this one, just going to quickly give a, an overview to the concepts of leverage points and what we're what we were talking about uh, when we use that term. So this term uh, was introduced by Donella Meadows, uh, who you may know of. She's a, a prominent um, thinker and founding figure of the whole area of systems change back in the uh, mid to late 20th century. And uh, she wrote this, this paper that we'll be looking at uh, later on, which was kind of a, a seminal paper in, in defining this whole concept and introducing it to the world. But of course, the idea is, is not really a, a new one. Uh, it's probably been around for a very, very long time, but um, her work along with other ideas about systems, uh, in systems thinking and, and systems change kind of uh, coalesced to give us uh, this modern understanding of leverage points and how to intervene in, in complex systems. Uh, so she proposed a scale uh, of places uh, to intervene in a system that will result in varying degrees of change within the overall organization. And she had this insight uh, that there may be places uh, in a complex system where a small shift in one thing can produce big changes in everything. And that's the idea of uh, leverage points, that you can uh, potentially get high leverage uh, in changing systems if you, if you understand that system and you try to find those um, those places or that dimen those dimensions of the system you can, you can influence. Um, so this is important in the context of uh, strategy. I think uh, leverage points are best understood as a strategy for systems change. That's what we're talking about here. Um, because in the context of system change, we'll always have to be doing a few things. One of them is understanding the system. And another is intervening or influencing that system in some, some place. Uh, so once we've understood the system, once we've mapped it out and so forth, we'll be talking about that. Um, we will then need to think about where we're going to apply our resources, where we're going to intervene and if try and influence the system. Of course, we're often dealing with complex systems in system change. This is a very big, uh, messy, complicated uh, systems. And there are countless places there where if we intervene, our interventions would have very little effect because they're actually quite uh, potentially forceful, forceful systems in the sense that there can be a lot of money, there could be a lot of resources, there could be a lot of um, influences already taking place in that system. So a lot of places we can go wrong. How can we find the right places where actually our interventions with our limited resources will actually lead to a change in the system. So system change requires affecting the organization at these high leverage points uh, to address systemic issues and actually achieve systems uh, change. That's the promise, that's the idea of leverage points. And one other thing you may, you may know, if you know a bit about leverage points already, is this idea that they're counterintuitive. They're not found, by that we mean that they're not found in uh, where we would commonly uh, perceive or, or uh, conceive of uh, locuses of influence and change within a, within a complex system. Often our thinking is linear in the sense that we look for the places in the system, the organization, that would have the highest immediate impact on that system when we think about change of systems. So we look at the central center, we look at the centralized institutions, we look at the top, the top of hierarchies in political systems, uh, in, in, in businesses, uh, CEOs and politicians and so forth. And we think those are the people who can affect change because they have that linear uh, causality, they have that money, they have that political power and so forth, that force. And actually um, they do have an influence in the system, but that influence uh, is, quite large, but it's superficial, right? It's actually, they have a linear causality. Um, they're part of linear uh, organizational structures that allow them to have a cause and effect actions within that system. And they can move things around, they can change things on one level, but actually that's quite a superficial level and it doesn't actually change the system or the system structures, but it change, changes the immediate outcomes and actually quite often leads the actual structure, the system, the system itself in, intact. So that's why it's counterintuitive. We often think of those places, the politicians, you know, the people at the top of hierarchies with a lot of resources and so forth, power, 
uh, as the people who can affect change. We just need to talk to them, talk to them, and so forth, and we'll be able to change change things. Uh, whereas the bridge points is um, saying something very different. Actually, we need to shift. We need to recognize that that's all on one level. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about the iceberg uh, model. And if we want to actually change the system, we need to operate on different levels. We need to operate on a systemic level, system structures, mental models, so on and so forth. We'll be talking all about that. That's a different level of abstraction, right? It's more abstract in the sense that we're dealing with relationships, we're dealing with patterns and structures and mental models and so forth. Um, and that's why it's counterintuitive. Uh, why it's important to understand these different levels of abstraction that we'll talk about uh, in a short while when we talk about the iceberg model. So here it is, uh, Donella Meadows, it's this paper uh, she wrote, Leverage Points, Place to Intervene in a the, in the System. We'll be looking at uh, what she came up with uh, in, in a short while. Uh, but this is, this is what she's saying about that counterintuitive aspect um, to Leverage Points. Time after time, I've done an analysis of a company and figured out a Leverage Point. In inventory policy, maybe, or in the relationship between sales force and productive force, or in personal pol policy, personnel policy. Then I've gone to the company and I've discovered that they've already a lot of attention to that point. Everyone is trying very hard to push in the wrong direction. So that's uh, another Meadows talking about that aspect of the counterintuitive nature to. Um, leverage points. And this uh, graphic here um, will hopefully help to contextualize what we're talking about when we say leverage points. So this is always, leverage points exist in the context of system thinking and systems change and of course systems mapping we'll talk about. So we we'll always talk about a system, right? We're always looking at the world, the organization as a system. And this is what a system looks like, elements and interrelationships between them and that system has an overall uh, pattern of organization that performs an overall function and uh, it, ex it exists uh, within an environment. And very often we're thinking about change as a change in the outcome to the system, right? We see something about this system that we don't like. Too many people are dropping out of a school, too many students are dropping out of school too early. Um, patients are waiting too long to, to get into uh, emergency and accidents and so forth or the traffic is really bad in our city. It takes too long to get to, to work and so forth. That's an outcome from the system. And normally try and change those outcomes um, on that level. And you can see that on the right hand side. What we're talking about with systems change and leverage points is how do we actually change the structure inside that organization? So it starts realizing very different um, functional behavior, different ways of organizing. But more than that, how can we actually change the overall paradigm? That is the overall way that people are thinking about this system and its, it, its function of what it's trying to achieve and so forth. And that's what we're trying to change. That's what we're trying to do in systems change. And it's where leverage points comes into play because then we're asking, okay, where in that system, what coordinated set of efforts should we take um, to influence and change that, that, that system structure towards a new pattern of uh, behavior and new outcome and so forth. And how can we really, how can we even recontextualize the whole thing by changing the thinking, changing the story um, of how people are understanding the system uh, and what it's about and what they're doing and so forth. So that's just to contextualize this idea of um, leverage points um, in the context of systems thinking and systems change.